So I'm back in the example session here, number 650, and we're going to take a look at the browser. So if you're in your session and you don't see this window, you can access it by pushing the Browse button here, and that opens and closes it. So the browser is where we find a whole bunch of things we can put into our song. The first page we see is this Home tab, and it has kind of some big buttons that actually link to the same things that you find up here. So it's just as easy to click these ones as it is to click these ones. So just so you're aware, those are duplicates. At the bottom of this, we have two buttons, re-index presets and update plugins. Basically, this is just to refresh our system if we've made changes to it. So if we have added some new presets or changed some, we can re-index those, and that will mean they will all get updated to the new versions. And same with plugins. If we've added new plugins or done something with them, changed them, then we can also update them here. So now let's go to the Instruments tab. This is where we find all the virtual instruments that we can use inside Studio One. And we're going to really get into this uh, in the next session. Uh, we can just do a brief overview here. At the top of all these, we see a sort by. This gives us different ways to sort the instruments we have. Now, I may have a whole lot more folders than you do. That's because I have some third party. That means um, plugins that are made by people who are not personas. So Presonus has their own set of plugins, but there's a lot of other companies that make their own plugins as well, and I have some of those. So up at the sort by, we can change how we see it. Flat means all the plugins get shown in just one huge list. We can see them sorted by folder, such as sampler and synth, but you can see most of my plugins aren't in folders, so it doesn't really work for me. I prefer to do by vendor, and this shows you who made the uh, plug-in or instrument. That's the way I like it because when I've bought an instrument, I know who I bought it from. So if I want to go find that specific thing, I can go click on the name and then I can see it right there. And the last is by type. And again, this isn't really useful for me anyway. This just um, shows us the different kinds of plugins we have, like the different um, file types that they come in. And this is not so useful because a lot of them have the same file type. So for me, vendor is better. Uh, over here, we have this Manage Plugins button, which for me is currently doing nothing. And beside that, we have the Show Thumbnails button. Like if you look at Personas, it has all these thumbnails. Thumbnails are just pictures of the actual plugins. So I can push Show Thumbnails to get rid of them, whatever you prefer. So below that, we have some other things that we're not really going to talk about right now because they're a little more complicated. Um, but you can take a look at them if you like. I wouldn't recommend get, I mean, you can experiment with them, but you can, it can get a little bit confusing if you don't know what they do. We will talk about them in depth though. I'm going to move over to the next tab, which is the effects tab. This is organized in the same way. Again, you can get flat folder vendor type. I stick with vendor and effects are th things that you can put on your instruments to change the sound of them in certain ways. So you can, put on things that change the way the volume moves or the way that the tone of the sound moves or you can compress them or equalize them, all sorts of things you can do. And we're going to be doing a lot with effects. So uh, this is a very important tab to know where it is. And again, I just keep it organized like this. Probably you only have personas, possibly one or two other ones, depending on um, your experience with digital music before. The next tab is the loops tab. And for us, this is the most important right now. So the first thing I want to say is the sort by. Now, I like to sort by this order. You get three options of sorting. So let's take a look at that. The first allows you to choose between any of these options. Nothing, style, instrument, character, general type, product, vendor. For me, I like to go with instrument first. This means I see these labels. Atmosphere, bell, uh, bass, bells, brass, drums. When I'm going to go put a sound in, I probably have an idea of what instrument I'd like it to be. So seeing this first allows me to say, OK, I know I want some drums. And then it shows us another level of organization, which we choose here, which is style. Then I like to have, I like to have style, but you could, again, have any of these other ones if you preferred. You can try them out. And in style, we see the kind of music that it comes from. So if I'm making some electronic music, I know I'm going to click on this EDM tab or I'm making jazz music or whatever. So that helps to organize further. And then underneath that, we have even a third level of organization, which I've set to character. Character means how it sounds, how it feels, aggressive electronic, fall, fill, full, kick and snare, loops, this kind of thing. So this is even a, a more sub categorization to filter your 
results even further so you can get more specific with what's in here. If you don't want to get so specific, you can just change this to nothing and it will show everything in the EDM folder. So I'm going to keep mine back on character because I like to have the organization. I'll close these folders. And the next thing that's really important for us is if you have installed Lydian Loops correctly, you should see it right here. So this is the loop pack that I created for uh, our next project here, our next task. And if you don't see this folder, and you may have installed it incorrectly, or if you forgot to install it, you can go back to the previous video where it talks about how to do that. But we want to make sure we're seeing this here. So inside here, we have two main categories, drums and instruments. If I open the drums, I get some more options, acoustic drums, electronic drums, and percussion. If you don't know, percussion just means basically things that aren't drum sets, so different kinds of things. So if I open the percussion one, I could click on, say, djembe. And if I double click one of these, you can see we can hear it. Now if I double click and then click on other ones, I can audition them. Auditioning just means you can hear them before you put them into your session. Just to check, is this the loop I want? Maybe not. So percussion, as you can see, is kinds of drums that you can layer on top of uh, your acoustic drum sets or electronic drum sets. They're kind of auxiliary drum loops. Now all of these things, as I just mentioned, are loops, which means they loop on themselves perfectly. So if we choose one, let's go with this. We can watch it down here. And it starts again perfectly. Now to make sure that it does that, we need to look at these controls down here. We have a play, a stop, and the loop function, which will make sure that this thing loops on itself every time so we can see how it sounds. Now this button, which is our little metronome button, says to play at song tempo. So we can see in the name of the file, I've called it conga, which is the kind of drum it is, 120. That's the tempo it is, and you can see that our session is at 120. And if I change this to say 150, and I keep this off, when I play this now, it plays at its original tempo of 120. But if I put this on, as you can see, it plays it super fast, which it's now sped it up to play at 150. So this is important to have on, because if you change the tempo of your song, you want your loops to match the tempo when you're auditioning them, when you're listening to them. Over here, we have a volume for our auditioning. So if we want need to hear our loops louder when we're trying them, we can turn this up or down or however you like it to be. Then these other things here just give us some information about the loop if we need to know. This is the sample rate, this is the bit depth, and then this is what it is. It's an audio loop, it's four seconds long, and it's at um, 120 be beats per minute naturally, but it can be changed to 150 or whatever tempo you happen to be working at, so long as you've got this thing checked on. Now to move things into your session, you just click them and drag them. And now I can see a little ghost um, image here of where I want to place it. So say I want to start at bar two, I just drop it right there. And say I wanted to layer on this loop, I could drag it into a new track below this one and just drop it right there. And then say I wanted some actual drums to go with it, I could try some out. I'm actually gonna put this back down to 120 because that's when, where the loops are supposed to be so they sound best at that tempo. And let's hear this again. That's good for me. I'm just going to put that in here. And now we can listen to the whole thing all together. And I'm going to push the slash key to turn my loop on and then push play. So that's the main features of the loops tab, and we're going to be dealing with that more in the next video. Now let's go over to the files tab. This is basically um, an area to access files that are on your computer or on your external hard drive or whatever you're using. So I have my Studio One folder here, but I've also added another folder that I have on my external hard drive called Drums and Samples, which is just a bunch of drum sounds that I've 
collected throughout the years and I can use those here and drag them in if I want to. You of course won't have this right now, but if you get some other kinds of sounds that are on your computer that don't show up in the Instruments tab or the Effects tab or the Loops tab, you can find them here in Files. The next tab is Cloud. We're going to talk about this in a future video. This is some cool features that come uh, bundled with Studio One that you can do some interesting things with. We have a pool. The pool is a list of all the audio files that are currently in our session. So we can see the files that I've used here. And um, this electric bass is actually from earlier. It shouldn't be here. As you can see, we don't have it here. But if I wanted to put it here, I could just grab it and drag it into the session. So the pool just keeps a list of everything that's in your session. So if you need to go see, oh, do I have a certain file in here? Am I using this file? It'll show up in the pool like this. And then the last thing we're going to look at is the search function. I use this all the time. So you can search in any of these tabs. So say I'm in the loops tab and I wanted to search for uh, acoustic drums. Oops. So now I get everything that is tagged with acoustic drums and I can look through all these loops. Now these loops I'm looking at here come from uh, all the packs that we installed when we went up to the Studio One installation window and downloaded all that factory content. I'm seeing my own Lydian Loops content and also um, the content that comes from those uh, files as well. So I can get out of my search just like this and then turn search off and I'm back where I was. That's it for the browser really as to how it works. And in the next video, we're gonna get into building some loops using the Lydian Loops Volume 1.